Hi everyone. Today I want to share with you a really cool way to make a soap recipe that uses up your old oils. If you are like me, you've probably collected a few different oils or you might have old oils just in your pantry like cooking oils and things um, that you aren't going to use but you don't want to waste, you don't want to throw them away. This is a really cool technique to use to work out how to put them all together into a soap recipe. I have to tell you that I've already filmed this video once before <laughs> and I made this awesome uh, laundry soap. I'm going to use it as a laundry soap. It's made with coconut oil, rice bran, canola and sunflower oil. I made it a couple of weeks ago and then when I went to edit the video the sound was completely no good. Um, I used my little GoPro camera. It was a bit of an impromptu thing and unfortunately it was an epic fail. But then when I shared the soap on social media, on my Instagram and my Facebook pages, everybody loved it and they're like, oh, show us how you did that. So I'm going to record it again. But the whole point of that video was to, sh I actually had some bottles that I just had a little bit left in them. Unfortunately now in making this soap, I used all those up. <laughs> but to kind of replicate the recipe, I went and scrounged a bit more rice bran oil and a bit more canola oil to kind of replicate roughly what I had used in this recipe. The first important thing to do is to decide how much soap you actually want to make and choose which moulds you want to use. So for this recipe, I, I know I've got enough oils to make enough soap to fit both of these moulds and I've got a fair bit of coconut oil so I'm going to make this like a cleaning laundry soap. So I'm going to make these two loaves and I do have a video to show you how to calculate the amount of oil you need for your individual moulds. But the main idea is that once you work out the total volume of your mould, multiply that by 0.7 to give you 70% of the volume. And about 70% of the volume of your moulds, and I'm using two, so it's going to be that um, volume combined, around about 70% of that total volume is the amount of oil you need for your soap recipe. Because don't forget, you need room for the water and for the lye and for essential oils if you're using them or fragrances or whatever. So, based on all of that, these two soap moulds together, um, the perfect oil amount for these two moulds is 1500 grams of oil. Once you know the total oil amount needed for your mould to make a soap recipe that's going to fit your mould, then all you need to do really is start putting your oils into a container and weighing them as you go and taking a record. Like if you've got random little amounts like this is canola oil and you want to use the whole lot up, you just add them to the container and record every single little amount of each one of the oils that you put in the container and then you can take that to a soap calculator which I'll show you and you can calculate a recipe that is has the perfect lye amount for the particular types of oils and amounts of oils that you're using because remember every different type of oil that you use in soap making has a different saponification value which means that it requires a slightly different amount of lye and which is sodium hydroxide in this case for bar soap making they all need different amounts of sodium hydroxide to turn the oil into soap so we need to be quite precise and record exactly how much of each oil we're using I'm going to start with the coconut oil first and I'm going to put all of my oils in this pot and use that to melt them on the stove because I've only got a little microwave now and my big jug doesn't fit in there. Because I've got a fair bit of coconut oil that I need to use up, um, I'm going to make the coconut oil 50% of the oils in this soap recipe. So 50% of 1500 grams of oils is 750 grams. So I'm going to measure out 750 grams of coconut oil to start with and then I'll just kind of measure out and record my other oils on top of that. Coconut oil is quite hard because it is winter time here. Well, it's almost spring.
There we go. That's 750 grams of coconut oil. So I've still got a little bit left in there, but I'll use that up probably in my next laundry soap batch. Now I've also got rice bran, canola, some sunflower oil and some old castor oil that I want to use. The canola and the rice bran, this is all I have of them and they really need to be used up. So I'm going to put all of what I have of those two in and then I'm going to top up the rest to make the 1500 grams of oil with the castor and the sunflower oil to finish off with. So that was 750 grams. This is what you want to do is write it down as you go. So I'm writing down all of my oils on my recipe. I've got coconut, I'm going to use rice bran oil, I'm going to use canola, I'm going to use castor and I will use some sunflower. So coconut, I've got 750 grams. Now I'm going to need to zero my scale to measure what these are as I go through each one. So that's why it's really important to write down what you're what you're putting in your pot, write it down before you zero your scale because you're going to need to know, you're going to have to add these up as you go to make sure you get the right amount to total the 1500 grams. So I'm zeroing my scale and I'm going to put this canola oil in next. Actually no, I've got rice bran oil on my list next so I'll put it in first. So this is rice bran oil. I'm going to tip this whole jar in. This is roughly round about um, the amount. I just eyeballed it, the amount that I put in the last recipe. Um, I had to go and scrounge some more so I could film this again. Oh dear. All right. So that's 370 371 grams of rice bran oil, 371. Now if you want, you can just add these up as you go, so you can do a bit of a running total. So I just get out my calculator and I've already, I've got 750 coconut oil plus 371 rice bran oil. That equals 1121 one, grams. All right, now we've definitely got enough space left to put all of this canola oil in, so I'm just going to put all of that in. Zero the scale. Come on, zero, there we go. Tip all of that in. Let's see how much that came to. All right, so that was. 127 grams of canola, 127 grams. So that is 127. So the, the total now is 1248. All right. So how much have we got left over then? In total, we want 1500, but we've already got 1248. So I'm just minusing 1248 from 1500 and that tells us we need 252 more grams of oil. Now my castor oil is really old so I really want to use up as much as I can but you don't want to put too much castor oil in soap recipes. I think I can get away with about 10% in this recipe and that should be all right. So I've got 252 grams left that I need. So 10% of 1500 is 150 grams so that would be all right I'll I'll use 150 grams of castor put that in zero the scale there we go there's 150 grams of castor let's check our total again and see how much left over because whatever's left over now is how much of the sunflower oil we'll use. 
So, so far I've got 750 coconut, 371 rice bran, 127 canola, 150 castor. The total for that is 1398 grams. All right, that sounds good. So now I'm gonna subtract that from the total to find out how much sunflower we need. So 1500 grams minus 1398 equals 102 grams of sunflower oil. There you go, let's get that in. All right, so that's good. I've still got a bit of that sunflower oil to use. I'll probably just keep using these up in laundry soap batches till I get rid of them all. I'll have to get some more coconut oil <laughs> and on the cycle continues. All right, we have now got 1,500 grams of total oils. I've recorded exactly how much of each of them I've got. What I'm gonna do now is put this on my stove to melt the coconut oil just on low heat while I go off and I'll sit down at my computer and I'll show you, go through how I calculate the recipe. All right, so now I go into my soap calculator and there are many you can use. I'm just gonna use soap calc and I'll just go through, put in the values, put in the oils for the recipe and it's gonna tell me how much sodium hydroxide and water I'm going to need. So I start here with one. I hope you can see my little mouse up here at number one and NaOH, that's sodium hydroxide. That's already clicked, so that's good. That's what we want for bar soap recipes. Number two, weight of oils. We're using grams, not pounds or ounces. I'm using grams and the default there is 500 grams. I'm going to change that to 1500 grams because that's our total oil amount. For the water calculation, I'm going to use the water to lye ratio method rather than the lye concentration or the water as percentage of oils methods. Um, I find that they both actually just cause endless confusion. <laughs> I'm going for a basic two to one water to lye ratio. That's just a moderate amount of water, which is good for a recipe that's really high in coconut oil because it will saponify really fast and a little bit of, you know, a good d decent amount of water, not too high, but a, a moderate amount of water is good. Because this is going to be a cleaning soap, I'm going to keep it, the super fat fairly low. I'm going to give it a 2% super fat. Now I'm going to put my oils in. All right, what did I have? Coconut oil, 76, whoops, 76 degree. That's just the regular coconut oil, the one that is solid when it's cold and liquid when it's warm. I'm going to put that in. And rather than putting in a percentage, because we're not working in percentages this time, we actually know the grams. We know the oil amounts that we're putting in. So we're going to click the grams section here rather than the percentage and I'm going to put in exactly how much coconut oil I'm using for the recipe which is 750 grams. Next is rice bran oil. Where are you rice bran oil? The rice bran oil refined that's the only option in soap calc that's okay. 371 grams so I'm just reading off my notebook in front of me as I do this. What's next? Canola Canola, there you go. I just choose regular canola oil. I'm not sure if my canola oil is high oleic or not. I don't think it is. It doesn't say so on the, it didn't say so on the on the package. So I just choose regular coconut, uh, canola oil and that's 127 grams. Next, I had castor oil, which is just there. Put that in, castor 150. And finally, sunflower oil. There we go. Just choose regular sunflower oil. And we had 102 grams. All right, so those are the exact amounts of all of the oils that I put into my pot. Now everything's in there. I'm going to click Calculate Recipe. 
great. So this is where if you wanted to record your recipe, you know, say if it turned out really good and you wanted to make exactly the same recipe again, you could write down these percentages, uh, but they all add up to 100% and they all add up to 1500 grams down here. So that's perfect. Now that we've got that in there, uh, just click view or print recipe. And here's our final recipe. So what I'm most interested in here is writing down the water amount and the lye, the sodium hydroxide amount. I've kept fragrance at zero. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to add some essential oils and I'll calculate them separately. So I know what my oils are. So I just need to write down the sodium hydroxide amount, which is 232 grams. Write that down. And the water amount is 464 grams cool all right you could look at your recipe here and evaluate it if you want for its qualities but I'm not going to bother and I presume you know most people if they've just got little bits and pieces of of oils you want to do a little bit of research into those oils and whether or not you know generally how much of them you can use in soap recipes you don't want to use a whole lot of something that you shouldn't use a whole lot of but with things like canola and rice bran and sunflower, if you're using them with a lot of coconut oil or a lot of other oils that you can use a lot of, then it's fine. So I'm not even going to bother evaluating this recipe. I know it's going to be a pretty decent uh, laundry soap, just general kind of cleaning soap for our household. Okay, now that I've got those amounts and my recipe is all good and checked, I will head back to the kitchen now and, and finish making my soap. So I've got my recipe. Now I'm just going to check on these oils. This coconut needs a bit more melting. I'll just turn that up. I'm going to make my lye solution now. So I need my goggles and my um, mask and I've got my gloves on. But before I do that, I'm just going to do some quick additional calculations because I want to add citric acid to this recipe. The reason why I want to add citric acid is that um, it's really fantastic for reducing soap scum in hard water areas, which is excellent for a laundry soap and it will be really good for my washing machine when I make my laundry soap powder out of this soap. Um, the other great thing about it is it reduces DOS, dreaded orange spots and spoilage in the soap generally. So it's an excellent thing to use for recipes where you've got old oils in the mixture that you're using up. So I'm going to be using citric acid at a rate of 2% of my total oil amount. So 2% of 1500 grams of total oils is 30 grams of citric acid. Now the thing with citric acid is that it actually consumes some of the sodium hydroxide that you use. So if you're using citric acid you need to calculate how much extra sodium hydroxide to use uh, to make sure that you've still got the same soap recipe with the same amount of super fat. If you don't add extra sodium hydroxide with the right calculation, you'll end up with a really high super fat soap, which you don't want. So I'll just work that out. I'll put all the details for this and I will put a version with and without citric acid in the recipe when I write it up for my blog. So you, you know, if you really want to make this recipe, um, you'll see both options. But really, I'm just doing this video to show you the method. So we're using 30 grams of citric acid in total for this 1500 gram oil batch. And each gram of citric acid consumes 0.624 grams of sodium hydroxide. So we need to multiply the amount of grams of citric acid that we have, so 30, multiplied by 0.624 grams and that gives us the total amount of extra sodium hydroxide we need for the recipe. So extra sodium hydroxide we need is 18.72 grams and then we will add that to the original amount of sodium hydroxide which was 232 which that's the amount that soap calc gave us. 232 plus 18.72 and this is our new total, 250 grams. Some soap calculators calculate the citric acid for you. Um, 
and that's a whole other video really. I'm going to do a blog post topic on citric acid so don't worry about it too much. I just wanted to show you or you know tell you about it because you're going to see me using it and you'll be like what's she doing? What is that stuff? So I hope I haven't confused you all completely. You do not have to put citric acid in this or any of your soap recipes. I'm just putting it in this one because as I said it's uh, it's good for cleaning soap and it does help to reduce spoilage, which is very handy for when you're using old oils as I am. All right, get the gloves on, get the goggles on, get the mask on. If you're new to soap making and none of this makes any sense to you, then make sure you head to my homepage on my channel. Uh, there's a whole lot of videos that will explain all of this to you there. All right, I'll put my water into my jug first. We need 464 grams of water. 463 that's close enough I'm just using cold water out of my fridge it just does help uh, reduce the reaction a little bit because you get more of a reaction when you add the sodium hydroxide if you're using citric acid next I'm going to weigh my citric acid I need 30 grams there we go just food grade citric acid is fine for the soap making. We'll mix that into the soap. Ah, sorry, into the water. We'll dissolve that first. Now that's fully dissolved, I will weigh up the sodium hydroxide and we'll put that in. So our adjusted sodium hydroxide amount is 250 grams. that's quite hot just gonna carefully put that aside and coconut oil is all melted I've also got some essential oil prepared for this recipe but you can leave it out I usually just fragrance my laundry soap at about three or four percent essential oils three or four percent of the total oil amount of the 1500 gram oil amount so I've got some um, cedar and eucalyptus and a little bit of patchouli in there as well. Well it's been 10 minutes or so I think I can make this soap. I realize that if I leave this lye solution fairly warm that's going to help it set up fast and maybe I don't need to use my stick blender and I can save on the washing up. So I've got my molds ready and nearby we can make the soap. I'll just mix with a spatula first. This might take a while. I think I'll just take my time with it and stir it by hand rather than getting the stick blender out. There you go, I've got a trace already. It only took about a minute. Oh, that smells good. Got a definite trace there, but I'll take it till it gets a little bit thicker. So it turns out that this was a big mistake. Hello, future Ellie here. It was a mistake not to stick blend this soap recipe. I have hand mixed lots of soap recipes and they've been absolutely fine, but this one was not. I don't know if this was a false trace or whatever. Like it, it was quite thick and I was getting a, a good trace and I thought it would be fine, but it, it wasn't. I went through the usual motions. I um, poured this into the molds. I insulated it, so I uh, let it gel. But I think because it wasn't mixed thoroughly enough with a stick blender, the gel wasn't complete. Um, and this is what it came out like. So a couple of days later I went to cut it and it was all crumbly. This is my new soap cutter by the way, which is awesome. Um, 
Yeah, so I didn't mix it enough. So it was really crumbly on the edges. The inner part of it gelled and that was fine. When I tested it, the inner part was fine. The outer part was not. So you're going to see what I did to fix that pretty soon. Hey folks, back again. I was not happy with how crumbly this soap was and I was really worried that I made a mistake. So I tested it and there's nothing wrong with the recipe by the way, it's just the way that I made it. I didn't blend it enough. So I tested this middle part here where it looks hard and gelled and that was green, that came out okay. But I tested the end piece and it came out lie heavy, quite purple. I'm, I'm very sure that I measured everything accurately, but I didn't mix it enough. So that hand mixing just was not enough for this recipe. I should have used the stick blender like I did the last one, which came out perfect. It's going to make the video a bit long, but I'm going to take the opportunity to show you how you can fix this. If you're sure you've got the right ingredients, but you didn't mix your recipe well enough, you just chop it up and I'm going to hot process it and then the soap will be perfect. I'm a bit annoyed with myself, but I thought, you know what, it doesn't matter. This is real life and I'm just going to show everybody how to fix it. That's the main thing. So I'm just getting my crock pot on, I'm just going to put it on high initially just to warm up and I'm going to throw in half a cup of water into that and then I'm just going to really roughly chop up all of this soap. I don't want to take too long. I've got other things to do today. so. Just really rough, chop it up small and pop it into your crock pot. You can do this on the stove too on really low heat. The finer the better. If you could grate this that would be even better but I'm going for the quickest possible method today because I've got other stuff I want to do. So hot processing this soap is going to force the saponification and once it heats up and it melts down a little bit I'll be able to mix it so all of the unsaponified bits will get all mixed through and it'll be all nicely cooked and perfect. It's going to take a little while but I don't have to go out today I've just got to work from home so I'm just going to put this in the crock pot and let it sit there won't be any work it's just going to take time to sit by itself. If you left this on its own it um, may saponify in time but I'm not happy when that happens. That's actually never happened to me before but a lot of people have told me about that happening and I know exactly what it is. It's, it's due to insufficient mixing so I'm not satisfied with that. I'm going to make this soap better and I'm not going to take the chance to wait around let it wait around. If it was fully gelled all the way through uh, it might be all right but it, it, it wasn't so never mind. My crock pot is absolutely chockers. It's only a small three litre one and this is a double batch of soap. So I'm going to let it melt down a bit first with what's already in there and then I'll put this other bit in once it comes down a little bit. Just going to put another half cup or a little bit quarter of a cup in there just to speed up the process. I've got this on high. I'll set my timer and come and check it in about 15 minutes. Generally you want to do this on low but it's a cool day here so I'm going to kick start it on the high. Leave that soap there and add that a bit later. Now it's been about half an hour. I'm just going, I've still got it on high. I've really cranked up this process. I'm just going to give it a little, little looky. Oh that crock pot is hot. Wow yeah see how all the liquid is down the bottom. It's getting quite hot and steamy. All the steam from that is just going to slowly melt this soap down. 
you have to be patient with this process. It doesn't take a lot of work. It just takes time and a little bit of monitoring. I'm gonna have new soap by the end of the day. Can't believe I made that mistake. Oh well, hopefully you find this interesting. I do get a lot of questions about this topic, so it's probably a good thing that it happened because now I've got a chance to show you how to fix it. So I can fit the rest of the soap in there now, hopefully. Oh, I don't have my gloves on. Oops. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> All right. And I'm definitely gonna test this before I put it in the mold again. All going well, we should have a lovely batch of hot processed soap by the end of it. Nice little rebatch. It's been about an hour. I've still got it on high. I better turn it down. All right, yeah, that's what we want. Nice, melted, sloppy soap. I've washed my molds out, so I'll just put this back into those molds and then it will be ready to cut again in, um, in a day or two, hopefully, <laughs> I can get this video finished. Perfect. This may not all fit in these molds because I've added some water to it and it can get a little bit aerated, hot process soap. It get, gets a bit fluffy, so it may have a bigger volume, we'll see. I just do a quick little pH test of this too. I've just got some water in the in the spoon. Yeah, it's all fine now. So that cooking has done the job. It has forced the saponification of the bits that weren't mixed properly. All done, all fixed up. Once they have cooled off and hardened, I'll be able to cut them and we'll have perfect soap. Oh my gosh, the soap is finally done <laughs> and it's really good. I'm sure it's gonna be really good. I've tested it, it's all fine. I'm just gonna pop these out of the molds now and cut them up and we're done. Ooh. A bit soft because I added all that extra water, but that's okay. These soaps will harden up absolutely perfectly. Um, hot process soap always has a lovely quality to it once it's had a good chance to dry out. So I will cure these for probably at least a good six to eight weeks so they get really nice and hard and it's going to be perfect all-purpose soap. If you're wondering about my soap cutter, I got it from Aussie Soap Supplies just recently. After the recent multi-batch soap session video, I um, used citric acid for the first time and I used a higher liquid amount and the soap came out really soft and this one's quite soft too. And it stuck to my knife and I got a bit, an <laughs> a bit annoyed and I thought, you know what? I am going to spoil myself for once and buy myself a soap cutter and I love it. There you go. If you are still watching, I thank you. <laughs> I think you're pretty amazing for watching, for sticking around this long, honestly. I don't know, it probably feels very long to you because it was a very long video for me to make. <laughs> I can't believe it. I think it's worth it though. I think 
doing these kinds of videos, yeah, they take a bit of effort and they are long to watch. They're not everybody's cup of tea, I know. But um, for those of you who ask me questions about this kind of stuff, I know it is really helpful to you. So I hope you got to see it and you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. The soap turned out awesome. I'm really happy with it. You know, like all's well that ends well. Um, yeah, thanks for your support everyone. If you would like to support me in my work because I'm pretty much doing these videos full time, it doesn't earn me a lot of money but it's just enough at the moment and I hope to keep going. If you'd like to support Ellie's Every Day in helping me to make these videos on this channel and on my bread channel as well, head to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Ellie's Every Day. And if you'd like to make a donation to support the, the work, the videos, you can do that there. And keep your eye out there too. And keep your eye out on my social media um, posts because I've got some more offerings coming up soon, hopefully. Anyway, thanks again, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Bye.